my talk uh, will be focused on the outcomes that we've uh, seen at the University of Florida. We've treated uh, over 6,500 patients. 98% of them have been on either a prospective outcome tracking study or on a clinical trial. And the experiences are mature enough and large enough in three areas. Um, these include prostate cancer, pediatric tumors, and tumors uh, in a difficult head and neck site, sinus tumors. I think we have enough data to prove principles of uh, proton therapy, principles that either um, show that when you reduce integral dose, you will have fewer side effects and a better quality of life, or you can escalate or intensify the radiation dose to the target and get a better cure rate. And in some cases, uh, because there's so much less dose to normal tissues, you can safely compress the treatment hypofractionate it. In prostate cancer, it appears to us that the disease control rates are 10 to 15 percent higher with proton therapy than they are with conventional radiation. In addition, it appears to us that the rate of bowel dysfunction, specifically frequency and urgency major issues for men who've received radiation, uh, the rates of those being bothersome are about half with proton therapy what they are with conventional radiation. Uh, we've also learned that we can achieve the same outcomes with proton therapy delivered in shorter courses, five and a half week regimen compared to an eight week regimen in selected patients. And interestingly, um, it appears that the toxicity goes up quite a bit when you try to do this kind of a course with conventional radiation. Um, our NRG or RTOG major cooperative study group in the US just published an outcome of randomization between the same hyperfractionated course and standard radiation, and their toxicity rate went up substantially when they tried to decrease the number of uh, treatments. So we think that uh, this is particularly important in prostate cancer because it will reduce the cost of treatment substantially. In the sinus tumors, We've treated a large number of them, and it appears that we've got disease control in a very, very high proportion of these really difficult tumors. These tumors sit near the optic apparatus, so we are always worried about blindness because of either radiation damage to the optic nerves, the chiasm, or the retina. And our rate of blindness is extremely low compared to historical studies with conventional radiation, and our disease control rate is extremely high. When we look at the doses that we've been able to give to the target, they appear to be substantially higher than what can be achieved with conventional radiation, which probably accounts for the higher disease control rate. In children, um, while we've treated a lot of children with different kinds of malignancies, my talk focused on children who've come to us specifically from the UK. Um, this is data that was compiled by one of my colleagues, and it, what, what it shows is really high disease control rates in three of the most common pediatric brain tumors in these children coming 4,000 miles to Florida from treatment from the UK. This has been a wonderful conference. I've thoroughly enjoyed the broad range of speakers. Um, we've had uh, biologists, we've had physicists, clinicians, engineers. It's been uh, wonderful.